Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Playing Pauper. It's been a while, but last week we had a deck tech featuring Demir Ratlock, and the deck looks like the kind of deck that I would enjoy playing. So Playing Pauper this week with Demir Ratlock, and we're going to do a super quick two-minute refresher deck tech on the deck. If you want a fuller breakdown, make sure to check out the instant deck tech, but we'll hit the important points here. Anyway, a quick reminder before we break down the deck. If you enjoy this deck, and you enjoy playing Popper in general, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk to Mere Ratlock, starting with a rat, Chittering Rat. So Chittering Rat's really devastating cards. Comes into play, Pony has to put a card from their hand on top of their library, and the idea of this deck isn't just to use Chittering Rats once to annoy our opponent, but to ghostly flicker Chittering Rats potentially every single turn on our opponent's draw step, which locks our opponent out of ever seeing a fresh card, unless they have an instant in their hand or can get empty-handed, and the trick here is if we can get Chittering Rats and Archaeomancer on the battlefield, then Ghostly Flicker targets both of those creatures, Rat puts a card back on top of our opponent's deck, Archaeomancer comes into play, gets back Ghostly Flicker, so we can do it again on our opponent's next draw step, and their next draw step, and their next draw step, so our opponent basically never gets to do anything, why we just slowly beat our opponent downs with Archaeomancers and Chittering Rats, we also have some other sweet Blink creatures, C8 Oracle, Muldrift, after card draw blink creatures works well with the loop. Thorn the Black Rose makes us the monarch, but is most important for stealing the monarchy from our opponent because the monarchy lets our opponent draw extra cards, which gets out of the rat lock. So Thorn of the Black Rose makes us the monarch, even if our opponent is the monarch. And then if we blink it with Ghostly Flicker, we can keep stealing the monarchy back again and again and again. Otherwise, Reaping the Grave Under Earth, get back our pieces from the graveyard, preordain sets things up, a bunch of removal, disfigure, chainers, edict, doomblade, echoing decay, counter spell to deal with the stack, Evan Cards Justice our pauper legal sweeper also could be a finisher if we have enough lands we can just keep casting this every turn to drain our opponent out of the game slowly mana base demir aqueduct dismal backwater is dual lands a bunch of utility lands baron more for cycling bajukaba graveyards mortuary myra gets back a piece from the graveyard also important for not milling out in some instances because we can keep flickering lands as well so mortuary myra can be keep putting a creature back on top of our deck if we're running low on cards radiant fountain for life gain against decks like burn some basic lands sideboard curse of the bloody tome gives us a back up finisher milling our opponent out duress hydroblast to deal with certain decks Stinkweed Imp, Stormbound Geist, kind of removal spells against Delver, good at blocking flying creatures, another Evancar's Justice in the Shrivel as Sweepers, Nile Spellbomb for more graveyard hate, and that is Demir Ratlock for Popper. And that's our playing Popper deck for this week. So I'm going to stop rambling. Let's jump into the gameplay, see how the deck works in practice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it, and I will talk to you soon. All right, playing Popper time. We are playing some Demir Ratlock, and this hand does not seem very good. We can't cast our counter spells. Well, this hand does not seem a whole lot better, but our opponent's mulliganing even more than us. Uh, Preordain's good. Preordain can hopefully find us some actual action. Blossoming Sands for our opponent. Well, Island and Preordain. Um, let's go bottom and top. I don't think we need Chainer's Edict. We already have a Doom Blade, so I think that I think that the removal situation is fine. Oh, we have we have all the removal we'll ever need. We need to find some card draw, basically, especially with our opponent. Mul <laughs> all right, I guess we should have played Black for Doom Blade, but it doesn't especially matter. That is a lot of Doom Blades. Chittering Rat. All right, pass the turn. Well, now I guess Black Mana does something. Opponent passes. More removal. Well, this hand is just the most controlling control hand in the history of Magic. Opponent, Core Skyfisher, sure. I mean, we might as well just use Doom Blades and save counter spells for something that we can't Doom Blade. Bounce Land would be nice. Being able to, like, pick up Radiant Fountain and do that stuff. Blossoming Sands for our opponent. Passes. Well, Doom Blade, Skyfisher. Untap. All right, Mortuary Mire. That does get us a Black Source for next turn, so we can play this Chittering Rats. We're getting closer. Opponent, Blossoming Sands, and passes. All right, so we will Chittering Rats. We don't have a lock at the moment, but this does make our opponent skip a draw, essentially. Put a card on top, Dismal Backwater, pass the turn. Maybe we just cycle this on Earth at some point? Try to find, like, a Moldrifter or something? Eh, we'll see. 
Ooh, Seagate Oracle. That's not bad. Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Take a swamp. Play the swamp. Go attacking. Well, we just got the the slowest beatdowns. Opponent down to 21. And passes. Ooh, another chittering rats. I'll go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to 18. And yeah, chittering rats. And I mean, this isn't a lock, but just two chittering rats here is looking pretty good our opponent's not doing anything so yeah opponent scoops it up well that was definitely aided by our opponent doing a lot of discarding but it did work pretty well in this matchup i think we just bring in stinkweed imp and bring in evan Car's justice go down unearth go down go down reaping the graves run it like that uh, all right. I mean, we got mana. Mana's good. Preordain should hopefully help us find something. Opponent. Blossoming Zans. Opponent went to six, but that's a lot better than last time where they went super low. Well, Dismal Backwater Bottom. Eh, Disfigure Bottom. Eh, there's a counter spell. Ah, uh, that could be good in the future. Planes for our opponent. Thrabes. Yup. Gets a clue. And another one? All right. Ugh, Echoing Decay would actually be decent here. Opponent passes. Play an island, pass the turn. Evan Carr's Justice is a nice sweeper if we if we need to sweep the board. Opponent, getting in for two, down to 18. And, sacks a clue. All right, opponent must be land light. Misses on lands. Um, yeah, Dismal Backwater. You, opponent. Thankfully, our opponent's clock isn't too fast, which is definitely working in our favor. Like, we have a little bit of time to sit back. Gets it. Down to 17. Seeker of the way. All right. Seeker resolves. Fingers crossed for no mutagenic growth. Play the swamp. Yeah, we're just going to try this. Uh, Avancar's Justice? Mutagenic growth is kind of a blowout. Come on. Oh, they actually have it. All right. Well, I mean, this isn't the end of the world. Although, it is annoying that we did not manage to get rid of the Seeker of the Way. Pass the turn. Opponent. Seder Wayfinder. Digging for a land. Opponent. Ooh, Temos High Priest. Oh, this is a combo deck, I think. We played a deck like this at one point. Or maybe they're just playing High Priest for value. Another Thraben Inspector. All right. Well, Radiant Fountain. Gain some life. And we're just going to go Shields down and Muldrifter. Put up some defense. Draw a couple cards. Ooh. Well, if we can get to a spot where we're stable-ish on board, Thorn of the Black Rose, super sweet. And we can keep gaining a bit of incidental life with Radiant Fountain. Opponent, journey to nowhere, grows the Seeker. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. That is not a ton. Ugh. We are taking five down to ten. This is going to be really close. Our removal spell to get rid of Seeker of the Way would be... Excellent, excellent, excellent here. Opponent passes, Mortuary Mire. So, well... Uh, all right, let's Muldrifter. Draw a couple cards. Play a Swamp. And yeah, Disfigure. Come on. Come on, no more tricks. All right, we got rid of the Seeker, and now I like where we're at. Now we're pretty stable. Our opponent has a couple card draws, but we have some cantrips. We have some life gain. This Thorn is eventually going to be good. Opponent. Travel preparations. Uh, all right, that's less good. Travel power up. Travel prep. Six damage. Yeah, all right. Let's take six. Down to four. So we will... Chainer's Edict. Get rid of a creature. Thorn of the Black Rose. Become the Monarch. Play an island. Preordain. Set things up. Uh, Counterspell. Do we want these? Um, Chittering Rats... So Counterspell Bottom, Chittering Rat's Top. Pass the turn. Definitely no attacks. We can't afford to keep taking damage. We draw a Seagate Oracle. All right, we're close. We're close. What's our opponent have? Sacks a clue. We get around protection by having a creature of each color, which is helpful. Land for our opponent. Sacks a clue. If we get to untap alive and start leaving up counter spells, then we're in decent shape, opponent. Two mana. Seeker of the way. All right. Opponent passes. We draw Seagate Oracle. Hmm. I think we want to leave up counter spell. So let's... One, two, three. All right. So I think we Seagate Oracle first. See if we hit an untap land. Oh, we hit Chainer's Edict. That works. Take Chainer's Edict. 
We would like our ghostly flicker, but I think we have to wait. Chainer's Edict our opponent. Get rid of a creature. Um, Backwater. Gain some life to five. Pass the turn. Draw a card. Opponent. Untaps. So if our opponent has something that actually kills us, Benevolent Bodyguard. Okay, that's fine. Protection from one color doesn't really matter. An opponent, we have them locked up, and, well, we never got to the lock, but we managed to just outvalue green-white. Eh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, playing pauper time. We are rat-locking some fools in pauper. Trying to, at least. Uh, all right. Uh, this hand, one land, not gonna be good enough. Gotta ship it. Ooh, one bounce land, even, even less. Uh, all right. Five cards. Well, we'll keep it. Uh, land to the bottom. Snow-covered island for our opponent. Well, we will dismal backwater. And pass the turn. Ponder for our opponent. Opponent shuffles. Well, I guess we just Pajukabog the Ponder. Opponent is trying to find a land by the looks. I mean, we don't really care about the Ponder, but we do care about playing a land. So opponent Ash Barons. What do they get? Snow-covered island. So this is probably a Delver deck. Definitely a Delver deck. Opponent passes. Well, <sighs> all right. We're going to swamp to play around days. Get rid of the Delver. Pass the turn. This deck might actually be decent against Delver. Opponent. Brainstorms. Island. Augur Bolas. Right. Opponent finds a Scred. Oh, so maybe they don't have days. They're mana screwed blue red Delver. <sighs> All right. Uh, well, I guess we just run out Seagate Oracle. Slightly less worried about days. I mean, they still could have it. But the I don't think this Delver deck plays it as commonly as some of the others. Hmm. Muldrifter we can't cast, or Aqueduct. I think we just take Aqueduct for now. Play Aqueduct. Pick up one, two, three, four, five. Um, well, let's take Bajukabog. Pass the turn. I don't know how much value there is to nuking our opponent's graveyard, but Augur number two gets our opponent. A... Ugh, gush. Well, that's some... Wow, they're just going to gush right now. Nine cards in hand. Opponent's going for it. Down to two lands, though. Opponent. Well, they have way more cards than us, that's for sure. Gush is a good way to draw cards. Opponent. Passing. Discarding. Well, let's Bajookabog. Get rid of the graveyard again. Pass the turn. Opponent. Ooh, Ash Barons. Probably going to get red mana. Yep. Snow-covered mountain. Well, we'll see. We're pretty far behind in cards at the moment. Lightning Bolt's Oracle goes to combat. Thankfully, our opponent has about the slowest clock in history. Down to 19. Dismal Backwater. Um, let's just... Chainer's Edict. Keep getting through those creatures. Pass the turn. Opponent. Snow-covered Island. And getting in for one. Yeah. Down to 19. Opponent passes. Uh, all right. Let's preordain. Bottom and also bottom. Play the land. Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Uh, all right. Ghostly Flicker's fine. We would like more to actually flicker, but we're getting to the point where we can flicker and leave up another bolt. All right. I don't think we can go shields down on this counter spell. Opponent. Preordain. A Mull Drifter would be nice. I guess we're getting to the point where we can flashback Chainer's Edicts. Although we would like enough lands to also leave up Counterspell. Opponent gets it. Down to 18. And opponent passes. Well, Dismal Backwater, gain a life. Pass the turn. Well, we're settling into the control slog. Opponent ponders. Not going to counter a random cantrip. Gush we will probably counter. That's counterable. Ponder, not as much. This might end up being a long one. Fairy Miscreant. Okay. That does speed the clock slightly. Now, Gush is getting countered. And Spell Stutter, we will also attempt to counter. And now we're out of cards. That's not ideal. Opponent should be pretty low on action, too, though. Boy, would a Mold Drifter go a long way. Opponent passes. I'll play Radiant Fountain. Chainer's Edict. Get rid of a Dork. 
Eh, that's fine. We're actually... Ugh, unless they have ninja. I'm still worried about ninja. That's a lot of card draw. Opponent. Combat. Getting in with Augur. No ninja. That's good. Passes. Well, play a swamp. Chainer's Edict. Uh, spell Stutter. All right. Sack Spell Stutter. They really want this Augur alive. I think they're hoping for a ninja to pick it up and replay it, which would be very bad if they draw it. Well, they drew it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, now we're running out of time. Opponent's drawing cards. We are not drawing cards. And you kind of see the downside of Ghostly Flicker. As good as Ghostly Flicker is, it, uh... It does not do anything unless we have a board, and we do not have a board. Opponent whiffs. Well, play Chittering Rats. Opponent has to put a card on top. Pass the turn. Well, Flicker Chittering Rats. And I guess Radiant Fountain. Flicker, same things. Opponent, card on top. Well, there goes all of our ghostly flickers. Opponent, combat. Attacks. Well, I mean, we are blocking the ninja. Oh, they drew another one! Oh! That is so, so incredibly bad for us. Huh, Delver. Delver's pretty busted. Hits a pounder. Well, Shaner's Edict. Flash it back. Oh, we could use a Mall Drifter. Well, we cleared the board temporarily. Pony has Ponder, though. We're ahead on lands, but we are not ahead in any other sense of this game. pony has got the cards. Although, one Resolve Mall Drifter could really change it. Or, like... Uh, Rachnomancer to get back Ghostly Flicker. We have a lot of draws that would be helpful. Well, okay. Doomblade is interesting. I mean, I guess that stops... We've made it through two ninjas, which is good. Miscreant for our opponent. Passes. Hmm. Well, Mortuary Mire. Put back Seagate Oracle. Pass the turn. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Miscreant. Oh, they have another one? Oh, uh, well, Doomblade. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Opponent had the right cards on top of their deck, that's for sure. Opponent replays Miscreant. Well, let's see what we can hit here. Seagate Oracle. Fines. And opponent's going to just kill it right now. Well, all right. Disfigure Ninja. Not what we were wanting. Where's all of our card draw? We're uh, 13 cards behind our opponent, which is... If they hit the fourth one, I'm going to puke. All right, opponent attacks, gets in. Preordain. Opponent has a spell stutter. Unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, we're playing essentially a control mirror, but our opponent's drawn 13 more cards than us. That is not a recipe for success. Seagate Oracle. They drew a no... Wow. Where are the lands? Where are the lands? Where are the lands in our opponent's deck? Oh, this is unfortunate. Opponent, preordain. Oh my goodness, this match. Evolving wilds, cracks evolving. Sooner or later, they gotta draw lands. Like, there has to be land. Oh, another fairy! Oh, this is, this is brutal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Opponent's deck should be like 50% lands. Oh, magic gods. Opponent untaps. Yeah, this has been brutal. Opponent, more action. Augur Bolas goes digging. Hits a gush for more card draw. Yeah, I mean, ah, that does it. Well, this, another fairy. This was brutal. This was brutal. Opponent's up to 21 cards uh, drawn compared to us. And that's not going to win a control mirror, being outdrawn by 21 cards. The world's worst thorn of the Black Rose. Going to give our opponent the monarchy. Yikes. Opponent's got a counter spell. Yep. All right. And that's the game. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, that was a little bit frustrating. We, uh, we did not... We did not hit any card draw. That was brutal. Hmm. All right. Well, bring in Stinkweed Imp. Bring in Duresses. <sighs> bring in, I guess, maybe Stormbound Geist. Go down. Unearth. Go down Reaping the Graves. Go down... Couple of Chainer's Edicts and Thorn of the Black Rose. Run it like that. All right, deck. All right, all right. Yeah, we just did not draw any extra cards that game and got absolutely just card advantage into the ground. Maybe this is a bad matchup. It feels like no matter what deck I play, Delver is a bad matchup. <laughs> Delver is just, 
I think far and away the best deck in Popper. But I guess it's kind of a tradition. Whenever we play, whenever we play uh, a playing Popper episode, <laughs> we do good except for when we have to play Delver, then we lose. All right, we get to play first. Hey, yeah. all right, Mulligan. Oh dear. Well, the way to beat Delver is not to Mulligan. Well, all right, five cards. Go, go, go. I guess we keep chittering rats. Hmm. <laughs> Delver is a matchup that we never win anyway, so starting with five, not ideal. Not ideal. I guess we did this in game one, too. That's, I guess that's part of the reason that our opponent was so far ahead there, is we just were not able to really get anything going uh, card-wise after the mulligan. Opponent, in the tank, accepts their turn, plays an island, preordains. Yeah, this hand is pretty bad but unfortunately we couldn't keep any of the first two because they just literally did not have any lands not enough lands to even kind of function island goo opponent undeps evolving wilds and fairy miscreant well yeah opponent passes play a swamp get rid of fairy opponent cracks evolving wilds gets a snow covered island yep untaps so what do we have that can get out of this? Probably drawing card draw, I guess. Preordain for our opponent. To the bottom, Evolving Wilds. Another fairy. And passes. Now play a swamp. Play Chittering Rats. Opponent cracks Evolving Wilds. Card on top. Pass the turn. Opponent. Stormbound Geist. Goes attacking. Yep. Down to 19. Well, play an island, get in for two. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Opponent. Augur of Bolas. Ugh. Yup. Hits a ponder. Ponders. No shuffle. Plays a land. Gets it. We draw Chittering Rats. Well, I mean, play Chittering Rats. Opponent puts a card on top. Pass the turn. We're kind of just losing to these flyers, though. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 13. Passes. Well, go to combat. We drew a ghostly flicker, which it is cute. Opponent blocks. Drops to 16. We pass the turn. Opponent, land. Attacks. Yep. Well, we drop to 9. We don't have enough blue mana to defend ghostly flicker. Opponent. Ugh. All right. We gotta try to counter. Spell Stutter. Well, now we have to disfigure Miscreant. Counter Stormbound Geist. Untap. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Ah, oh, man, I wish we had some card draw here. Well, Ghostly Flicker. Opponent's gotta put back both their cards. The challenge is we're, we're losing on board here. Opponent puts back their two cards. Well, play Bajukabog. Get rid of the graveyard. Pass the turn. One more land does get us to Chainer's Edict, but it's not very good against Stormbound Geist, which comes back as a 3-3 flyer. About it. Gets in. It's us to six. Ugh. Ninja on top. Ugh. This feels like a very, a very interesting, probably not very good matchup. Dismal Backwater. Well, we'll play it. Go up to six. At the same time, we did start with... We did start with uh, five cards in both games, maybe. Definitely in game th uh, game two. I know we mulliganed in game one. I don't remember if it was once or twice. So that's probably making this matchup look... Another? Okay, Ash Barons. Probably making this matchup look even harder. The fact that we're just starting on so, so few cards. Yeah, we're, we're done. Well, I mean, pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Echoing Decay Stormbound Geist. This comes back as a 3-3, but oh, opponent has a, a spell stutter. All right. And we'll scoop it up. Yeah, that was a lot of mulligans. A lot of mulligans for the rat lock. And maybe a bad matchup. I don't know. I think no matter what deck you play, it feels like Delver's a bad matchup. At least that's the playing pauper way. No matter what jank we play, you do good against everything except Delver. And you just get owned by Delver pretty much every time. Alright, 
playing Popper time, we are looking to retlock some people in Popper. <laughs> I was going to say modern for a second, but we're playing Popper. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Basic land, bounce land. It's a little slow. Ugh. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see how this goes against burn. The slowness of this hand could be an issue against burn. Land? That's not an aqueduct? All right. Well, island preordain. Bottom. <sighs> yeah, we got a bottom bottom. All right. Well, that is a land. So if our opponent plays a creature, we can kill it and wait on the aqueduct. Opponent probes takes a peek. Well, now they know what we're up to. I mean, our hand is powerful, but it is fairly slow. Lava runner. Yup. Opponent combat. Get in for two. Well, we'll take it. Down to 15. Opponent passes. Another untapped land would be fine. Well, play a swamp. Pass the turn. Throne of the Black Rose can be good if the game goes long enough. Rift Bolt coming down. So we're going to be at 12. And unfortunately, we still don't have double blue next turn unless we draw land. Opponent, combat, attacks. Well, we will Doomblade. Stay at 12. Come on, land. We would like to see a land. From our opponent and for us. Thermo Alchemist. Okay. Well, at least that gives us something to do this turn. Worst case, we kill Alchemist and play the bounce land. Preordain. Well, alright. Kill Alchemist. Aqueduct. Pick up the island. Pass the turn. This is gonna be close. Close, close, close. Opponent untaps. Lava Spike. Nine. And passes. We draw. Aqueduct. Hmm. We're at nine. Bolt, bolt, fire blast kills us. Bolt, fire blast kills us. Alright, well. Eh, yeah, let's Thorn. Thorn of the Black Rose. And hope we survive and can start leaving up counters. Draw a card. Preordain. Opponent untaps. This is a big turd cycle. We could be dead here. Land. Bolt. Are we dead? Fire blast. Down to two. But not officially dead. Um. Yeah, we just have to play Aqueduct. Pick up the Swamp. Uh, pass the turn in case there's a hasty creature. Draw a card. Discard. Um. Disfigure. Opponent untaps. Passes. Seagate Oracle. Well, play the Swamp. Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Take Dismal Backwater. Go to combat. Attack with Thorn of the Black Rose. Hit our opponent to 17. Draw Chainer's Edict. Discard Chainer's Edict. Opponent untaps. <laughs> oh, man. This is so close. Opponent. Passing. We draw Muldrifter. Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Preordain. Bottom. We really want life gain. Bottom, bottom. Swamp. Well, play Dismal Backwater. Gain a life. Pass the turn. Draw a card. Discard a Swamp. Ooh, come on. So close. So incredibly close. More counter spells would be nice. Eventually, our opponent's going to be able to cast two spells in a turn. That's what we're afraid of. There's a... Oh, there's a land. Curse of the Pierce Tart. We gotta counter it. We lose to Fire Blast, but we have to counter it. Opponent passes. We draw. <sighs> Archaeomancer. Well, let's preordain. Bottom, bottom. Seagate Oracle. We really need a life gain. Bajukabagger Island. Take an island. Seagate Oracle. Ugh, Aqueduct. Play Aqueduct. All right. Well, now we're really hoping for Miracle. We dug as far as we could to find life gain, but it might be a bit late. Pass the turn. Draw. We're dead to any burn spell. Discard an island. Opponent untaps. They know the coast is clear because we're tapped out. I mean, I guess they could be worried about days, but that's not that realistic in this deck. Opponent thinking it over. Think it. Wow. Not killing us yet? Opponent passes. Well, play Dismal Backwater. Gain a life. Play Seagate Oracle. Take Chittering Rats. Go to combat. Attack. Chittering Rats. Card on top. I do not know why we're not dead yet. But the rats might get there. Yeah, pass the turn. Draw a card. Searing blazes us to three. Oh, counterspell, but we can't cast it. Pwned it. 
Why didn't they kill us last turn? I don't understand. All right. Oh, they didn't have enough mana. Jeez. Oh, we made that so close. Well, now we go to game two. And in game two, we don't get a ton. Uh, yeah, run it like that. Bring in the duresses and hieroblasts, go down some of the removal. We don't really have just life gain though, other than our lands. We have the one radiant fountain, four dismal backwaters. We came really close to stabilizing. Really, really close. If we had gotten one more turn, I don't know. Maybe we should have just left up. Maybe we should have just left up mana in case we drew a counter spell. That doesn't seem practical though. Dismal backwater, go. Well, this hand has a little bit of life gain, a couple disruption spells, and we really need to draw one more land. Mountain for our opponent. Passes. Land? Maybe? Perhaps? Chittering rats. Well, duress our opponent. Opponent lightning bolts? Sure. Curse of the Pure Star, Fire Blast Needle. All right, well, take the curse. Play Dismal Backwater. Pass the turn. Come on, land. Land number... Opponent probes. Land number two, please. Or three. If we get one more land, then Seagate Oracle should find us another. But if we don't draw land number three, things are scary. Rift Bolt suspended. Wow. All right. Fire Blast Needle Drop, sure. I guess get in the damage while you can. Opponent just ran it out there. We draw. Well, all right. Preordain. Put on top. Put on top. Play the land. Pass the turn. Pretty sure we're just going to counter this Rift Bolt. Rift Bolt comes down. I mean, it basically... It basically gains us three life, and I think that's worth it. Land for our opponent. Chain Lightning. Down to 11. Opponent. Passing. Well, let's Seagate Oracle. Go digging for a land. Well, all right. Baron Moore is technically a land. Play Baron Moore. Pass the turn. Opponent. Passing. Well, go to combat. Get in with Seagate Oracle. Hit our opponent. Seagate Oracle. Go dig it. Grab Demir Aqueduct. Play Demir Aqueduct. That's the land we wanted. Pick up Dismal Backwater. Pass the turn. That's another extra life. And we got a higher Blast in hand. I feel like we're in pretty good shape this game. Fairly stable. Lava Spike till 8. Land. Opponent passes. Disfigure. All right, so let's Chittering Rats. Opponent puts a card on top. Dismal Backwater. Eh, we definitely should have attacked there. Pass the turn. That was a mistake. Opponent plays the land. Passes. Play the island. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Ghostly Flicker. See if they drew an instant. All right. Land on top. That's good. Take... Yeah, I guess Ghostly Flicker. Opponent. Card on top. That's the Rat Lock. That's what we're looking for. Opponent couldn't cast it. Opponent passes. Doom Blade. Go to combat. Attack. Play Archaeomancer. Get back Ghostly Flicker. And that should do it. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Ghostly Flicker. Archaeomancer and Rat. Get back Ghostly Flicker. That is the Rat Lock. That's the Rat Lock. Put it back. Put it back. Keep drawing that card while we beat you down. Opponent puts it back. We get back Ghostly Flicker. And this one is over, ladies and gentlemen. Opponent passes. Ooh, even Radiant Fountain to run it, rub it in. Get in. Hit our opponent. Radiant Fountain. Up to 11. Stop. And, yep, opponent scoops it up. That's what we're trying to do. That is exactly the plan of the Rat Lock. Well, all right. That worked pretty well. We are going back to the draw, but... Yeah, all right, run it like that. The rat lock worked. That is the plan. That is the plan. Bone it. On the play. All right, we'll keep this. It's not a insane hand, but we got removal. We got a tiny bit of life gain. Preordained to set things up. Rift bolt suspended. Pwn it. Passes. Hmm. Yeah, let's dismal backwater. Go up to 21. Pass the turn. Pwn it. Going to rift bolt us. Down to 18. Land. Lava Spike, down to 15. Needle Drop, down to 14, draws a card. Opponent, passing. Yeah, well, let's Preordain. Oh, we want both of these. Put on top, put on top. Play the Swamp, dress our opponent. Molten Rain, get to Lava Runner in lands. This is where we want to be. Opponent can get in with the Lava Runner, plays a land. Curse of the Pure Star, all right. And Lava Runner. Well, we're just going to empty the board here. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 12. Down to 11. So we untap. We play the land. 
Shaner's Edict, Lava Runner. And pass the turn. Opponent draws land. Lava Spike. Well, we will Hydro Blast Curse of the Pure Star. Down to eight. Opponent's empty handed, though, which is good. Seagate Oracle. Go dig it. Take. Hmm. Let's take the land. Dismal Backwater up to nine. Pass the turn. Opponent. Chain Lightning. All right, down to six. We wouldn't mind finding more counters or life gain. Well, preordain. Bottom, top. Play Mortuary Mire. Get in with Seagate Oracle. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Land. We untap. So many chittering rats. Well, cast a Muldrifter. Draw a couple cards. Aqueduct. Pick up Dismal Backwater. Opponent's being smart and staying empty-handed, which is making our chittering rats a lot worse at the moment. Opponent untaps. Lava Spike to three. Opponent passing. Now let's preordain. Put on top. Put on top. Play Chittering Rats. Even though our opponent's empty-handed. Play an island. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to 50. Un opponent untaps. Land. Passes. Now let's Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Take Muldrifter. Dismal Backwater. Up to four. Go attacking. We gotta hold him off for, like, three more turns? Down to ten. I guess two more turns of attacking does it. Opponent, what did they find? Keldon Marauders. All right. Uh, counterspell. Opponent passes. Disfigure. Well, cast Muldrifter. No evoke. Dismal Backwater. Up to five. Combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. To four. Pass the turn, and I think we got it. I don't think they have a five damage burn spell. It's a land, and that is the GG's, and that is Ratlock taking down Bird. Whoo, thank goodness. Well, we actually Ratlock someone. Not only do we beat Bird, we actually Ratlock Bird, which, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. And, well, that's the Ratlock. We actually did the actual locking with the rats, which, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Having a nice little conversation with our opponent in the chat before the concession. Opponent, pass of the turn. I guess they're actually going to let us kill him. And Bowden scoops it up. Well, our opponent, very friendly, even in the flood out. So, uh, shout out to Marvables uh, for being a pretty cool opponent. Anyway, that's a rat lock. Got there. And uh, one step closer to a winning rat record. Sweet. <clears throat> All right. Playing Popper time. Mulliganing in Popper time. <laughs> No lands. Plagues of Ratlock and Popper. And this hand, eh, we're going to keep it. It's not thrilling. Eh, Seagate's good. Well, land and... Do we even preordain? We know we want... Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait till turn two. We know we want the Seagate Oracle, so there's not a ton of value in... Well, all right. There goes our preordain. There's not as much value since we already know that we want to draw the Seagate Oracle. But if we knew we were going to go against a duress deck, we probably would have run it out. Is this mono black? Mono black. Mono black is funny in popper. Mono black control or mid range. Oh, not mono black. Well, regardless, mono black control slash mid range used to be the best deck in popper for a, quite a while, but it's pretty much fallen off the face of the earth. Land or counter spell? Well, I guess we take counter spell. We kind of have two lands with this Demir Aqueduct picking up a land, so we don't desperately need land here. Opponent. More duresses. Jeez. Duress central over there. Opponent. 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 Takes the counter spell. That's a lot of main deck duresses, but Jukabog. Okay. Opponent passes. We draw a swamp. Well... Play the land, go to combat, get in with Seagate Oracle. Now we are going to cycle on Earth if nothing happens here, so we can get it back with Archaeomancer. Gotta get that sweet, sweet value. Pristine Talisman. Yup. Opponent passes. Well, cycle on Earth into Baronmore. Play Archaeomancer. Get back on Earth. A little bit of grindy pauper card advantage. Hit our opponent. Down to 19, sort of. But they gain a life with Tally's men. Play the swamp, pass the turn. This does seem like the kind of deck that we can lock if we get our stuff going. Could use a Muldrifter. Muldrifter would make us happy. Muldrifters, more Seagate Oracles. At some point, Ghostly Flicker will probably be good. Opponent's gotta have a ton of removal. 
This is probably a Evan Carr's uh, Pestilence. Yup. Opponent passing. Well, let's cycle Baron more. Untap. Go to combat. Uh, attack. Hit our opponent. Preordain. Bottom and... Uh, yeah, I guess we keep counter spell even though we can't cast it. Play a swamp. Pass the turn. Mana is a little bit clunky. Opponent. Are they going to be able to just pestilence us out? They might be able to. We'd kind of be fine with our creatures dying to get rid of this pestilence. Opponent. That is a really insane amount of discard. This deck is interesting. I don't know if I've ever played against a deck with this much main deck discard in Popper. Main deck full on duresses and castigates. Takes unearth. Oh, we would love a Muldrifter. Basilisk. Picks up Bajukabog. Opponent's passing. We draw Aqueduct. Well, go to combat. Uh, attack. Hit our opponent. They gain a life. Well, play Aqueduct. Pick up the Swamp. Pass the turn. Pestilence for one. Down to 19. Opponent. Thinking it over. We do have to keep our opponent from becoming the Monarch. That would be very bad. On the other hand, we would love to draw our one Thorn of the Black Rose. Us becoming the Monarch here would be so good. We really just need a way to draw cards. That's what we've been lacking. To go with our opponent's infinite... Infinite discard. Opponent. Talisman. Hmm. Okay. Opponent passing. Wow, they're not going to play Bajukabog. Interesting. Dismal backwater. Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Sort of. They're gaining two life, so we're not really making much headway. Dismal backwater. Pass the turn. Opponent gains back their life. Oh, come on! Come on! Muldrifter off the top. Or Seagate Oracle to find Muldrifter. Or we would actually be fine with a Doomblade. Like, killing our own creatures to get rid of Pestilence is a line that I'm actually, actually considering if we can figure out a way to make it work. The Pestilence is the biggest problem at the moment. Opponent. Five mana. Eh, changing their mind. Opponent passes. All right. Oh, we untap. Play a Swamp. Go to combat. I think we have a plan. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. One, two. One, two. One, two. Wait. Is there a way we can do this and leave up... One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, all right, so Echoing Decay, Archaeomancer, Chainers Edict Ourselves. This seems so counterintuitive, but this is going to get rid of the Pestilence. So go to the end of the turn, Pestilence triggers, goes away, and now we get to Reaping the Graves, get back both of our creatures for next turn. Yep. So Seagate Oracle back, Archaeomancer back. Still have Counterspell mana up. All right. Well, that wasn't bad. A little weird and counterintuitive, but it works. Opponent's going to divest. Eh, all right. Boy, is that a lot of discard. That is a lot of discard. Takes Archaeomancer. A little strange when they have Bajukabog in hand. This is the most discardy deck I've ever seen. Guardian of the Guild pack, sure. There's the Bajukabog. All right. Well, yep. Opponent's passing. We draw Mortuary Mire. Well, let's... Hmm. Let's Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Looking primarily for card draw. Hmm. That doesn't help. Well, take a Doomblade. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Shainer's Edict. Gets rid of Seagate Oracle. Opponent gonna get in. Hit us. Yeah. Come on, Moldrifter. Opponent passes. Ghostly Flicker. Well, Mortuary Mire. Put Seagate Oracle on top. <laughs> so grindy. Pass the turn. Opponent. Gains a life. Untaps. Yeah, that is what we don't want to resolve. Can't let our opponent become the Monarch. Ugh. All right. Well, kill Palace Sentinels. Yeah, this is bad. This is very bad. Opponent's a monarch. Goes to combat. Gets in. Gets a... Hmm. Yeah, that's what we were trying to defend against. And we weren't able to defend well enough. 
They got to the point where they could cast two in the same turn. <sighs> we take a counter spell. Pass the turn. Land for our opponent. Palace gu Guardian of the Guild Pack. So we will counter spell. They found a Pestilence. Yup. Opponent. Passing. Well, Ghostly Flicker. Gain a life. Seagate Oracle goes digging. We take Seagate Oracle. If we can steal the Monarchy, we have a chance. Ooh, that's good. Chainer's Edict. Steal the Monarchy? That's exactly what we needed. Now we have the crown. <laughs> Alright, we don't have the crown yet. Opponent Disfigures. Hmm. Well, Chainer's Edict. That's unfortunate. That's the power of being the Monarch. If you're the Monarch, you get to you get to draw that extra card and find those disfigures. Oh, that's bad news. That's really bad news. Ponet. Tap in Oodle's Mana. We need our Thorn of the Black Rose. Evan Carr's Justice with Buyback. Ponet. Passing. Drawing an extra card, of course. We draw. Chittering Rats. Well, step one, Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Get Preordain. Step two, Preordain. Doomblade bottom, Seagate Oracle top. Seagate Oracle. Take Chittering Rats. One, two... All right, play Chittering Rats. Make our opponent put a card on top. Well, this is it. Pass the turn. Can we steal the crown? Opponent, land. If we steal the crown, I still think we're favored to win this game. They don't have enough mana to Evan Carr's Justice twice. They're one short. So we can kill Chittering Rats. Okay, Evan Carr's Justice. Yup. And Journey to Nowhere. If their last card is Disfigure, I'm going to cry. Opponent passes. Draws a card. We go to combat. We attack. Can we get this crown? Huh, finally. All right, we get the crown. Chittering Rats. Put a card on top, opponent. Dismal Backwater, gain a life. Draw a... Mall Drifter! Okay, things are starting to come together. We're gonna need to answer that Avancar's Justice at some point. Opponent, stay in course. Down to 12. Orza Basilica. So we need to find another counter spell at some point. Opponent passes. Well, we will hardcast Mall Drifter. Draw a couple cards. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Play Radiant Fountain. Draw a card. Hmm. Disfigure. Not super helpful. Opponent. Avancar's Justice. And Deadweight. Yep. And Bajookabog. Sure. Opponent's down to just the Evan Carr's Justice. We're drawing two cards a turn. Muldrifter. That's a good one. So, cast a Muldrifter. We do have two more counter spells, I believe. Hmm. Oh, do we Chittering Rats here? One, two, three. So, we have two counter spells left. One Ghostly Flicker. One more Chittering Rats. Yeah, let's do it. Chittering Rats. Pwn has to put Justice on top. Aqueduct. Pick up Mortuary Mire. Pass the turn. Draw a Archaeomancer. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. Pwn it. Here it comes. Avangar's Justice sweeps the board. Passes. We draw Chittering Rats. Well... Mortuary Mire. Put Muldrifter on top. Hmm. So if we play this Chittering Rats, I'm not sure if it's worth it. Unearth is gone. Reaping the Graves is gone. Chittering Rats, Chittering Rats, Chittering Rats. Yeah, I think we have to just pass and let our opponent draw. We draw Muldrifter. Opponent. Radiant Fountain gains some life. Here it comes. Avangar's Justice. They're getting close to being able to do it twice, which is scary. We need that counter spell. Well, cast Muldrifter. Draw a couple cards. Bajukabog, our opponent. Oh, we're running out of time. 18 cards. Yeah. Um. We have, what, one Ghostly Flicker? Oh, this is bad, but we got to do it. Chittering Rats. We can't let our opponent draw land in double Evancar's Justice. Pass the turn, draw a card, Mall Drifter. Opponent untaps. Evancar's Justice sweeps our board. Hits us to six. 
Now we need our last Aqueduct to pick up Mortuary Mire. Mostly we need a counter spell though. That is still plan A, B, and C. Muldrifter. Draw a couple cards. Hmm. Hmm. Well, play Aqueduct. Pick up Mortuary Mire. Thorn of the Black Rose. Pass the turn. Draw a land. Discard a land. Discard a disfigure. Opponent, untap straws. Land. Well, this is it. We're running out of time. Opponent gets to double up this time, and we need to draw the counter spell this turn or we're dead. And even if we draw the counter spell, there's a chance we don't get to finish the game before we run out of cards. Opponent passes. We just could not find the counter spell. Ghostly Flicker. All right, so play Dismal Backwater. Gain a life. Pass the turn. Draw. Not counter spell. Discard a land. Opponent untaps. Evancar's Justice. Down to one. Evancar's Justice. So now we have to Ghostly Flicker, Radiant Fountain, Dismal Backwater. Gain enough life to live one more turn. All right, Dak. There's 11 cards. There's two counter spells. Opponent passes. Seagate Oracle. So, Seagate Oracle. Go digging. We hit not a counter spell. Archaeomancer. Get back Ghostly Flicker. Ghostly Flicker. Seagate or Oracle. Archaeomancer. Get back Ghostly Flicker. Take Chainer's Edict. We're going to run out of cards. Ghostly Flicker. Archaeomancer, Seagate Oracle. Get back Ghostly Flicker. Finally found Counterspell. Get back Ghostly Flicker. Mortuary Mire. Get back Chittering Rats. <sighs> Pass the turn. Draw Chittering Rats. Discard Chainer's Edict and Disfigure. Now is there any way we kill our opponent before we run out of cards? Did they draw duress? Opponent. Evancar's Justice. Well, we counterspell. You got another one. Knight's Whisper. Draw some cards. Deadweight on Archaeomancer. And I think that's the end. Talisman. Man. All of our counterspells at the very bottom of the deck. And that's how that's how it ends. Preordain. Now we just can't win. Good God. We are making it's so challenging um so we play dismal backwater the problem is actually the monarchy that's what's going to kill us here so we play chittering rats play dismal backwater stop on our opponent's draw step draw an extra card unfortunately draw step ghostly flicker mortuary mire chittering rats Opponent's got to put a card on top. We get back Archaeomancer. Yeah, the monarchy's actually going to be the death of us. Opponent passes. We draw Archaeomancer. We go attacking. We hit our opponent. I guess we can stack a bunch of creatures on the top of our deck to try to not mill out. So we Archaeomancer. Get back Ghostly Flicker. Play an island. Maybe this will work? Ghostly Flicker, Archaeomancer, Mortuary Mire. Get back, Ghostly Flicker. Put Chittering Rats on top. Opponent's going to gain some life. The other problem is we might just time out trying to do all this. Then we Ghostly Flicker, Mortuary Mire, Archaeomancer. Get back, Ghostly Flicker. Put Thorn of the Black Rose on top. Pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's draw step. We draw an extra card. Draw step. Ghostly flicker. Archaeomancer. Chittering rats. I mean, we have them locked. The question is, can we kill our opponent? I... Wow. Opponent. Huh. <sighs> Opponent scoops. Thank you so much, opponent. Our opponent could have played that out, and it's possible that we would have run out of time or maybe milled out, although that's less likely. But yeah, 
Oh my goodness, that game. It took us so long to find a counter spell to beat that Evan Cars Justice, but we got there eventually. And then once you lock, you lock. That is the upside of this deck. The lock is good. The lock is very good. Man, do we want to bring in Curse of the Bloody Tome? Hmm. Well, I think we definitely need Dereses. I think we can go down Disfigures. We can probably go down Evan Cars Justice. Nile Spellbomb, sort of so so. Stinkweed Imp is. Eh. Hyder Blast, no. The question is do we want Curse? It is a win condition. It might be worth it. What would we cut? Echoing Decay and maybe one Doom Blade? Yeah, we get to keep the Doom Blades. Even Doom Blades are sort of so so. Well, let's try it like that. The protection from mono colored thing is annoying with our removal. Well,. Here we go. Off to the races. Uh, all right. I mean, we got stuff. We don't get hit that hard by duress. We lose our reaping the graves, but our hand is fairly duress resilient. Cabrilla crossroad. Opponent passes. Well, island, goo. Opponent untaps. And bounce land. They have a lot of life gain. Uh, swamp, goo. Opponent castigate. All right. Gets their pick. Anything in our hand. Eh, I assume we take Muldrifter, but I guess we can get it back with Reaping the Graves if they don't have Bajookabog. Takes Muldrift. Oh, it exiles. That's right. Yeah, that works. Well, yup. There goes Muldrifter. Play a land, and we will Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Grab a Swamp. Pass the turn. Opponent. Please, no Monarchy. The rest is our Reaping the Graves. And Journey to Nowhere. Yeah, that works. And Bajookabog. Oh, so much disruption. Opponent passes. Uh, play a Swamp. Run out Chittering Rats. No luck, just being a little bit annoying. Very afraid of the Monarchy. We don't really have a way to get through if our opponent manages to take the crown here. Knight's Whisper draws two cards. Opponent. Knight's Whisper draws two more cards. Swamp. And passes. Come on, something. <laughs> These are the worst Archaeomancers. Alright, land go. Alright, you got a full hand opponent. What can you do with it? This deck is a little light on cantrips. That is a real thing that that is kind of a issue. Opponent. Whew, boy, so much discard. Another thing we gotta be aware of is the time. This match is very likely to end in time and we're technically behind by about two minutes right now so shaner's edict the removal keeps coming oh uh, what we would give for a mold drifter bounce land oh uh, mold drifter would make us so incredibly happy untap well preordain uh we do not want random Ugh. yeah both to the bottom into a land there's some argument for keeping shaner's edict i think but because uh, it gets rid of the protection from mono-colored thing, which is an annoyance. Opponent plays a land. Passes. Well, we draw a counter spell. Play an island. Eh, pass the turn. Now I guess we're going to sit on this counter spell for the time being. Hopefully draw a Moldrifter eventually. Opponent. Knight's Whisper. That's good. They are going to find more discard. Tally's men. Sure. Read the bones. <sighs> All right. Let's counter spell. Opponent's drawing too many cards. Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Maybe that was greedy. Opponent passes. Well, preordain. Put on top. Put on top. Play a swamp. Pass the turn. Well, we found our counter spell again. We're staying in it-ish. We're not making much headway. Scoured Barons for our opponent. Yup. Adds a mana. Gains a life. Passes. Well, we will... Chittering Rats. Reverse card draw for our opponent. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Draws whatever they had in hand. Passes. We draw. Ooh, ghostly flicker. Hmm. Well, let's Archaeomancer. Get back Preordain. Preordain. Bottom. Bottom. Pass the turn. Well, get him with Chittering Rats. Pass the turn. Opponent gains a life. And I think we... Yeah, I think we just let our opponent draw here. Opponent draws. One more turn and we got the lock set up. Opponent duresses. Takes Ghostly Flicker. Well, we got one more. No more Archaeomancers. Opponent. Pestilence. Uh, yeah, I think that's good enough to counter. 
Thorn of the Black Rose Muldrifter. That's what we're looking for. Pwn it. Not so many Bajuka Bogs. Bajuka Bog. We untap. Come on, card draw. Come on, card draw. That's Muldrifter. Well, cast Muldrifter. Come on, Ghostly Flicker 2. Well, go to combat. Attack. Not Ghostly Flicker, but Chittering Rats 2 is not bad. It really depends on our opponent's hand, though. Hit our opponent. Chittering Rats. Put it back. Pass the turn. Opponent's at 17. Untaps. What's their card? Is it a sweeper? Oh, it is. Oh, Chainer's Edict. All right. So we sack a rat. Not the sweeper. That's good. Opponent passes. We go Ghostly Flicker. Aqueduct. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Well, we will unearth Chittering Rat. Opponent card on top. Oh, they have an instant? They do. All right. There goes our Archaeomancer. Well, this is it. We got some bodies on the battlefield. Pass the turn. Oh, it was an instant. Opponent, what do they draw? Pestilence and Evancar's Justice are brutal. Adds a mana. Passes. Doomblade, not exciting. Well, go to combat. Attack for six. Hit our opponent. Down to eight. Two more turns. Two more turns. Opponent untaps. What do they draw? Talisman. A little bit more life. We would love another counterspell or card draw. Radiant Fountain just to land. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent to three. Play the land. Well, this is it. We have we have lethal next turn if our opponent doesn't draw anything. Up to four. Untaps. Six power. Then go to six life. Come on, land. Divest. Nothing in hand you can take. What's the last card? Scoops it up. Oh, we got there. We ground them out in Ratlock, getting it done in the longest, grindiest, timeoutiest game. We locked up in game one with almost zero cards in our deck. And then game two, we kind of got the aggro in. Wow, opponent's deck is super controlling. That is super controlling. It looks like something I would enjoy playing. Lots of card draw, just grind them out. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Sweet. Well, we got there. One more to go. And kids are already eating. We'll take it. All right. Playing Pauper time. We are rat logging in Pauper, and that sounds fine. I mean, eh. Oh dear. Is it? Is it this pestilence deck again? Um. All right. Let's see. Let's island and preordain. Justice bottom. Oracle top. Pass the turn. Opponent. Vault of whispers. Castigate. Well, opponent's got options. Hopefully they don't take Seagate Oracle. That's a card we want most. Boy, so much discard. Is this deck increasing in popularity? I think this is the same deck we already played. It takes Chittering Rats. All right. Opponent, passing. Well, Dismal Backwater. Gain a life, pass the turn. Opponent, Radiant Fountain. Thraben, oh, okay. This is a little different. This is not as controlling as the last one we played. The, the last one we played was ridiculously controlling play the swamp let seagate oracle opponent cracks the glue draws a card take yeah yeah i guess preordain still gonna need to be aware of getting got by the monarchy that's probably what we're most afraid of opponent oh dear four mana all right pestilence sure opponent passing dismal backwater well let's preordain yeah, those are both decent. Put on top, put on top. Dismal backwater. Gain a life. No attacks, pass the turn, leave up our Doom Blade. We want to leave ourselves in a position where if our opponent plays Palace Sentinels to become the Monarch, we can immediately steal it back. Or that we draw our Thorn of the Black Rose. We have one Thorn of the Black Rose. Knight's Whisper. Opponent gets to draw a couple cards. Down to 21. Another three minute inspector. Yep. Pestilence. Sure. A little bit of ping ping. Basilisk. Yeah. Opponent. Passing. Well, let us. Doomblade, three minute inspector. Untap. Preordain. Um. Hmm. Put on top. Put on top. We could get rid of the pestilence, but it leaves us open to the monarchy. That's the tough decision. Hmm. We'd have to kill our own Seagate Oracle, too. Yeah, let's Bajuka Bog. Get rid of the graveyard. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. We do need to get rid of the Pestilence eventually. Knight's Whisper. Draw some cards. Ancient Den. 
Castigate. All right. Opponent's got some options. Takes Archaeomancer. Cleric. Gains some life. Well, let's disfigure Thraben Inspector. Untap. Preordain. Bottom and top. <sighs> Pestilence. Yeah, bottom and top. Shainer's Edict. Go to combat. Get in with Seagate Oracle. Hit our opponent. Play the land. Run out Chittering Rats. Pass the turn. Opponent. Undeps. Radiant Fountain. Gains a bit of life. Clues it. Could use like a Muldrifter. I kind of feel like this deck just needs four Muldrifters. I kind of feel like that's where it's at with this deck. Like, we just are always saying we want a Muldrifter. So I kind of feel like we just should play four instead of three. Pestilence. Pestilence. Kills Chittering Rats. Skyfisher. Picks up a land. And passes. Well, let's Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Take Counterspell. No attacks. We are going to need to find a removal spell for the Skyfisher eventually. Radiant Fountain. Guardian of the Guild Pack. Well, yeah, we will counterspell that. Opponent. Getting in with the Skyfisher. Sure. Down to 17. Pestilence. Pestilence. We draw. Counterspell. Well, go to combat. Attack. Pestilence. Down to 14. Yeah, this is an issue. Opponent untaps. Uh, all right. Counterspell. Opponent combat. Attacks. Hits us. Down to 12. Pestilence. 11. Pestilence. 10. Well, we need to cycle unearth. Cycle barren more. Untap. Well, that gets rid of the Skyfisher. Go to combat. Attack. Pestilence. Yup. I don't know if we can get out of this. Play Seagate Oracle. Take... What is our chance? One, two... Ah, uh, they're just gonna grind us out with... With this Pestilence. Alright, take Thorn of the Black Rose. Pass the turn. Little bit risky, but I feel like we need the body. We're basically in a weird, really weird race mode here. Because we're taking up to four a turn from Pestilence. So we need to get our opponent's life total low enough that we actually are going to win that race. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Well, we will Doomblade. Opponent. Passes. Pestilence. Pestilence. Down to seven. Well, we untap. Go to combat. Swing. Opponent. Has. Uh, prismatic Strands. That's... That's probably the card that beats us. So opponent takes zero. Pestilence is... Well, Thorn of the Black Rose. Become the Monarch. Pestilence. Yes, Pestilence is going to go all the way. Actually, if our opponent has a Black Source... Ugh, so close! That Prismatic Strands was insanely good for our opponent. So we draw something that isn't helpful. Oh, we drew the Muldrifters, but they're not enough with this Pestilence. Opponent. And it looks like they have a black source in hand, and they're doing the the sneaky, the sneaky slow roll black source. <laughs> All right, opponent. Pestilence is away the board. Down to two. Pestilence plays a black source. Wow, does not have a black source? Well, they must have another plan for winning. That was, that was interesting. We don't have many counter spells left, though. So something's going to probably get us Doomblade. Well, Evoke Muldrifter. We need a counter. Well, that's a counter. All right. Pass the turn, draw a card. This gives us a chance. We can counter something that would kill us. Opponent. Pestilence. Well, counter spell. Staying alive for the time being. Radiant Fountain. Gain some life. Opponent passes. Ghostly Flicker. Well, Muldrifter, cast it. Draw a counterspell? No. We have our Kaomancer for next turn. Can we survive this turn? That's the question. At one. Pestilence, or if they have Evancar's Justice, that just kills us. On the other hand, there's hope we've dealt with two Pestilences. There's usually only, only three in the deck. We draw an island. Opponent untaps. 
Do they have number three, Bajukabog? Well, there goes our graveyard. Yep, that is unfortunate. Vicious Offering kills Muldrifter. Opponent passes. We draw Aqueduct. I'll play the Island. Reaping the Graves Muldrifter. Replay Muldrifter. I mean, we're shields down, but what can you do? Pass the turn. Hope they don't draw it. Hope they don't draw it. The protection from monocolored thing is bad for us, too. Wow, this ended up being a really close game. We pass. Draw a card. Chitter oh, Chittering Rats. Uh, we will discard a... One, two, three. One, two... Ugh. All right, discard Aqueduct. We have the lock for next turn. Do they draw it this turn? We're so close to actually actually sealing this up. Opponent, two mana. Vicious Offering on Muldrifter. Okay. We untap. We draw. We play a Swamp. We Chittering Rats our opponent. Put it on top. Not drawing Pestilence this turn, opponent. That's what we say. Yup, put it back. Um, Actually, let's see. Let's Ghostly Flicker. Chittering Rats Bajukabog. Exile the graveyard. Second card on top. Opponent's empty-handed. The graveyard has been emptied. And I think the Ratlock might have got there. I think we might have got there. Whoa, Ratlock. All right, pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's... We draw a card. Stop on our opponent's draw step. And Ghostly Flicker. Put it back. We gain a life. Did you draw an instant? I feel like if our opponent had an instant, they would have played it. And then our Kalemanster locks it up. We go up to two. Opponent does not play an instant. Oh my goodness. We untap, we draw, we play an island, we go to combat, we get in with Chittering Rats, we hit our opponent, and now we got our Archaeomancer, run out Archaeomancer, get back Ghostly Flicker, draw a step, stop set, draw a card, and opponent, they know the lock is in and scoops it up, and we are one win away, one single win away from a... 4-1 finish with our traditional our traditional loss to <laughs> our traditional loss to Delver. Every time we playing Popper, we lose to Delver. That's just the way of the world. Uh okay. Well what do we want against this deck? Huh. Ha huh, ha huh, ha huh, ha. Huh. So pestilence. How can we stop a pestilence? It's basically on the stack with counterspell or dressing it. The problem is they also have a lot of creatures. They're not that spell heavy of a deck. They have some removal. They have the prismatic strands and castigates, but they're really more of a creature deck. They have like 20 ish creatures usually in these white black pestilence decks. So do we take out? Well, I mean, I think we can go down Evan Carr's justice for duress. That's an easy one. We could go down Unearth. I guess we go down Echoing Decay for Duress. Those are cards that don't really kill that many of our opponent's threats. They have a lot of three toughness threats. Um, maybe just like that. Can we get one more in? We don't. I don't think we're gonna curse. We're not gonna Stormbound guys. Hydroblast. Stinkweed's okay. It does block their flyers. Maybe we want a Stinkweed too. Stinkweed go down Doomblade. Doomblade actually seems decent though. Maybe we just cut the unearth. Although it's actually better now that we're bringing in Stinkweed. Um, let's go down the Disfigures, I guess. Go down Disfigures, bring in the Duress. That sounds about right. Let's try it like that. All right, we're on the draw. One more. One more win for the 4-1 with Ratlock. We're kind of doing it. Uh, all right. Well, one land, but double preordained. So we should be able to hit our land drops without too much of a hassle ideally opponent ancient den and passes one to six by the way we draw i mean as long as we get up to three mana sea at oracle should take care of the rest a swamp would be nice so we could preordain duress next turn well play an island preordain uh, uh, okay unearth bottom dismal backwater top so we hit our land it's not an untapped black source but it's still a a reasonable a reasonable land. Ooh, opponent's missing black mana. Opponent passes. We draw. Opponent's got their own mana issues. This hand should be pretty good for the grind once we once we start playing Z Gates. It's a lot of cards that replace themselves. Opponent. Thinking it over. Preordain. Always a preordain. Alright, well let's preordain. See if we hit a swamp. 
We definitely have to hit a land for next turn. All right, let's duress bottom, dismal backwater on top. Play dismal backwater, gain a life, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Do they find their black mana? That's the biggest question. If they do not, oh, they don't by the looks. Opponent passing. Okay. Uh, so let's duress our opponent, see what's in their hand. All right, a million black spells. Well, I guess they're going to pick up part of our hand with duress or attempt to. Uh, let's take castigate and preordain chittering rats is good barren more bottom chittering rats top um yeah pick up the island pass the turn opponent really needs black mana this turn because if they don't hit their mana we get to start chittering rats oh boy well if there's one thing that chittering rats is especially good at punishing it is people missing lands so chittering rats dismal backwater Pass the turn. Opponent. Draw nothing. We draw. Reaping the graves. Well, let's... Um... Let's just... Archaeomancer. Get back. Preordain. Island. Preordain. Bottom. Bottom. Well, Counterspell's decent, too. Get in. That's our defense for a Pestilence, although... Our opponent doesn't seem super close to Pestilence at the moment. Opponent down to 20. Untaps. Draws. Well, there's black mana. So our opponent is going to get to start playing magic and take our counter spell. We'll see. We'll see if they're too far behind. If we draw a ghostly flicker, oh, wow. All right. Well, uh, Muldrifter, full price. No land. Well, another chittering rats for next turn. Opponent, 17. Untaps. Oh, are they missing? Yeah. Looks like they're still missing land drops. No, all right. Night's Whisper. All right. There's a land. So opponent's getting there-ish. Go to combat, attack, hit our opponent. Down to 11. Chittering Rats. Put it back. Oh, Chittering Rats is so punishing. Opponent untaps. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. We could have countered it, but I don't think it's worth it. Hmm, well, that's awkward. All right, well, now I guess we're, all right, I guess we're gonna counter that. Ha. Huh. Well, I guess we should have just countered the first one. We draw a swamp, go to combat, attack, hit our opponent. Play a swamp. Play Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Take, hmm, Thorn of the Black Rose. Reaping. Yeah, let's just reaping the graves. Reaping the graves. Double chittering rats. No surgicals to worry about in the world of uh, Pauper. Eh, all right. Rat, rat. Bring him back. Pass the turn, and our end is loaded. I guess our opponent's best bet is probably just to stick a Pestilence, honestly. That's the one card that I could see them maybe getting out of this with. Duress, takes Chainer's Edict. The Raven Inspector. Uh-huh. Uh, opponent's fighting. Vicious Offering, Muldrifter. Yup. Opponent passes. Well, let's just Chittering Rats. Opponent puts one back. Chittering rats. Opponent puts one back. Aqueduct. Pick up a land. Go to combat. Attack. And the double chittering rats might just seal the deal here. Down to seven. Opponent. Ooh, Palacent. <laughs> so opponent does become the monarch. The bad news for our opponent is we will become the monarch. So, uh, Thorn of the Black Rose. Steal the monarchy. Seagate Oracle. Go digging. Take Chittering Rats. Island. No attacks this turn. We're getting close. We just need to... We just need to uh, finish off these... Oh, there's a Doom Blade. That's a good step. Opponent. Draws. Combat. Echoing Decays are Chittering Rats. All right. Cracks the clue. Yup. But we are still the Monarch, which is really important here. Swamp. So, Doomblade Palace Sentinel. Yeah, we're just going to go for it. Uh, Chainer's Edict. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent to three. Draw a card. And Pestilence doesn't do it anymore because it's just going to kill our opponent. And I think we just rat locked our way to a 4-1 in Pauper. Somehow, somehow, somehow. 
Knight's Whisper, opponent to one. And I don't think there's a way out. And opponent scoops it up, and that is the 4-1 with Ratlock. We got Delvered, like always. We always get Delvered. That is basically a tradition on playing Pauper. But we finish with a 4-1, and that means we get to crack some treasure chests. Oh, we get to crack these things, too, these promo boosters. Well, let's do those first. They're pretty worthless, but eh, maybe... Ooh, Rishaka. Rick, uh, Rick Shasha. Rick Shasha, Vizier. Eh, this card was never good. It seemed for like a second that maybe it was good. I guess it was actually like an intro pack rare. You could make it big when you delved, but it just wasn't worth it. Just these rhino people. That's better. Trophy mage. Full art. Yeah, all right. And we get... Oh! Oh, oh! I mean, it's not worth anything, but it looks sweet. I love the horns going off the top. Probably one of the better promos you can get. Nicole Bolas, the Planeswalker. All right. And now on to the main event for Treasure Chest. Number one, we get... who? Wow! A Johnny Mentor of Heroes. This is the first Mythic Edition Planeswalker I've opened. Unfortunately, it's a, a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, which which is a, not a valuable Planeswalker, but it is a, it is sweet looking. I like how these look on Magic Online. I should upgrade. The full art is pretty sweet. And then also a Steam Vents. Couple of ticks, not bad. Some play points and a Bitey. Bitey the Carry On Imp. <laughs> Vanguard. Well, that's not a horrible chest to start with. Next up, we get Hallowed Burial. There was a time when this was played in Modern. Not really anymore. Terminus has taken over if you want to put stuff on the bottom. It was like a Gifts target, I think. Modern might have been slower then. Tezzeret the Seeker. Yeah, Planeswalker, number two, in honor of War of the Spark. Talos Paladin, eh, decent ally, I guess. Play points, and last treasure chest shot, we get... Traxos. Ugh. One of the worst against odds decks <laughs> that we've done in a while. Well, I guess it was like a year ago now, almost, but oh, that was a rough one. And some play points. Well, that was Ratlock action, and... The deck was pretty sweet, but I guess that's something to talk about in the wrap-up. So, anyway, I'll be back. We'll talk about it in the wrap-up. See you in a second. So, what do we learn this week about Demir Ratlock in Pauper? And the deck was good. Of course, I mean, we had our traditional loss to Delver. We talked about it during the league, but it feels like no matter what we play for playing Pauper, we lose to Delver. Yeah, that's just Delver, and that's just us. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at playing against Delver, but that's a deck we can never beat on playing Popper. But otherwise, we won all four of our matches. We took down Burn, we beat Selesnya Aggro, we beat a couple of Orzov decks, one more, like, Orzov Control, one more Orzov, like, Monarchy mid-range. Uh, so the deck, it worked pretty well, and we had some absurd games, like, Oh man, the Ratlock, it's kind of funny. When you see this deck on paper, you think, okay, I'm just going to like run out the Ratlock. I'm going to stop our opponent. We're going to win quickly. That's not how this deck works. This is a very slow controlling deck. And we saw with the Ratlock, it's really a late, late, late game plan. Like we eventually on turn 20, assemble the pieces or get that back from the graveyard and get our opponent to one card. And then it closes out the game. So the way to think of the rat lock in this deck isn't so much like, all right, turn three, chittering rats, turn four, our KO Mancer, turn five, lock you out of the game. It's more our finisher where we make it so our opponent can't do anything relevant in the late game. And that gives us time to win by beating down with our very random dorks, our Seagate Oracle, our mold rifters. So overall, I mean, the deck felt solid. Four and one is a very solid finish. The deck worked well. Most of the pieces worked well. A couple of like small things that maybe could be improved. And honestly, I'm not even sure a hundred percent if they should be changed or not. But a fourth mold drifter would be nice. It felt like we spent a lot of games being like, all right, I really want a mold drifter. Please let us draw mold drifter. Please let us draw mold drifter. So that was one issue. The other issue we occasionally ran into is we're very removal heavy and counter spell and cantrip light. So there's a couple times where we were really desperate for a counter spell, like the Evan Card Justice lock game. We were digging frantically to find a counter spell, and we eventually did, but we almost ran out of time. We finally hit it with like a turn to go. More cantrips would help smooth things out a little bit. A couple of our losses, or even our rough games, were because we just didn't have enough lands. And preordain, it's very easy to keep one land island preordain uh, because we're probably going to find the lands and get to our Seagate Oracles and proceed to do what we need to do. So those could be things 
things to consider. Like, maybe you can trim back a little bit on removal, because we have a ton of removal spells, and play a little bit more on the cantrippy slash counter spelly, and add in that Muldrifter, maybe a couple of Ponders, or you could rework the mana base to play Brainstorms by putting in some Shuffle effects. But I'm also not sure about Curse of the Bloody Tome. I'm guessing that's purely for the control mirror. If we play against a control deck that's playing instant speed, uh, we could bring those in as a finisher because instant speed control decks are pretty good at shutting down the rat lock. So maybe it's necessary, but in general, the sideboard felt good as well. So all around, Yes, we lost to Delver, but we always lose to Delver, so that can't really be a surprise. And Demir Ratlock, it felt fun. If you enjoy controlling decks with almost combo-esque finishes, it seems like a pretty reasonable option for Poppers. So, yeah, I mean, all around. It was a fun deck to play. It was competitive. Can't really complain. Uh, so, anyway, that's been our Plague Popper for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.